welcome to the Dr. Frankavilla Show. I'm your host, Dr. Carolyn Frankavilla, board certified family physician and diplomate with the American Board of Obesity Medicine. I've been helping patients lose weight to treat and prevent medical problems for the last 10 years, and I'm taking what I've learned from them to you. In this podcast, you will learn the science behind why you struggle with your weight and what to do about it, tips for common challenges, work to fight bias about what a healthy weight really is, and improve your relationship with food and your body. Please remember that while I'm a doctor, I'm not your doctor. This podcast is meant to be informational in nature only, not medical advice. Please seek out care from your physician for your specific needs. Okay, let's get started. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Dr. Frank Avila Show. Today, I'm going to take you on a little journey as we explore how to know if it's time or if you should be considering taking a medication for your weight or getting surgery for your weight. And I'm going to share some personal experiences I've had with my health and my body where investing in some sort of treatment has paid off and get over some of the mindset blocks we sometimes have that get in our own way of seeking out safe and effective treatment. So I am really excited to share this with you because I think it's going to help you change your mindset, maybe about something you're going through, maybe about something a family member or loved one is going through, or maybe just what you're seeing in the media. Maybe it'll help explain why people make these choices. Maybe it'll help you make yourself feel more confident in making the choice to use surgery or medication to help you with your weight. Before we go there, I want to remind you that you can sign up to be part of my listserv so you get a weekly update of what the podcast episode is. And you can also download that free handout, the Weight Care Mini Guide, which is a great place to start if you are on a new weight loss journey. If you're trying to figure out what's a good fit for you, it's going to help you start off reflecting on what makes sense for you and have some of the highlights for the podcast there. So go to the Dr. Frank Avila Show website so you can find those things. And without further ado, let's jump right into today's topic. So about a month ago, I was making some, you know, Taylor Swift style friendship bracelets with the little tiny, tiny clay beads. And my eyes were killing me. Like I was having such a hard time getting those tiny little beads on the string And I started to feel really kind of like irritable and annoyed because I was concentrating so hard on doing this. And I thought to myself, you know, maybe some reading glasses might help me see these tiny beads and this tiny clear string a little bit better. And so I went upstairs and grabbed some reading glasses. And sure enough, it was like a magic wand. All of a sudden, putting those tiny little beads on the string got so much easier. And then I took a look at my iPhone and I have like the giant iPhone and reading the text and the screen on my iPhone was also a lot easier. Like who would have thought this $10 purchase of reading glasses was like a magic wand? Now, it would be silly of me not to use that tool when I need it, right? And I'm going to go into a deeper story about about my vision, but kind of just starting to open that conversation of if there was a medication or surgery or device that suddenly made maintaining your weight, losing weight, eating healthy, exercising that much easier, it felt like a magic wand, would you consider it? Would it be worth it to use that for you? Would it be worth it for your loved one? or a stranger that you don't know and might be judging about using surgery or medication to use that. If you have not checked out Taylor Tomlinson, she is the comedian of our time. She is hilarious. And she talks about her mental health on the stage a lot in her stand-up acts. And she's been diagnosed with bipolar depression. And one of her little bits is about how taking medication for her bipolar is like having arm floaties, right? Like she's like, yeah, as long as I have my arm floaties, like I can go to the pool, right? I can live my life. I can be this very, very successful person. I I just have to take my medicine, right? And so I think this is a great comparison. Like if you don't know how to swim or you're a kid and you're learning how to swim, 
and you want to safely swim at the pool, maybe you're going to wear a life jacket. Maybe you're going to wear arm floaties. These are just tools so that we can be on a level playing field. And again, sometimes for people, a surgery or a medication are those arm floaties. They let you operate on a level playing field. Okay, so back to me. So I got surgery a few years ago to correct my vision. Before that, I had really, really bad vision. Like, you know, the big standard eye chart that has the very, very big E at the top of it, the E that's like, I don't know, eight inches tall, maybe it's even bigger than that. Without my glasses, I had to get about 10 inches, like right in front of the chart to even see the big E. And we had like one of these charts at my clinic. So this was like my party trick at the office if people did not believe me how bad my vision was. So I had extremely, extremely bad vision. I, I couldn't function without glasses. Like if I needed to do something in the middle of the night or I lost my glasses or they got broken, I couldn't do anything. I, you know, I, I was very, very limited with my vision. And I did wear contacts for a long time, but at some point, quite a few years ago, they became very painful to my eyes. And I would still wear them for a couple of hours here or there, sometimes to do CrossFit because working out with glasses was challenging. And skiing, it was really uncomfortable to wear goggles and glasses. So I'd wear it for that. But my eyes would hurt afterwards quite a bit and during the activity. And there was a lot of things that I just really couldn't do because of how strong my contacts and glasses were. It was really hard for me to do all that much water activity because if water got in my eyes, it really hurt a lot more because my eyes were always irritated from the contacts. And if I lost a contact, I'd be, you know, sort of blind and incapacitated. Glasses in the pool do not go very well. They get tons of water spots on them. And you can't go down like a water slide or go in the ocean with glasses on because they're going to get knocked off your head. And, you know, now I've lost a $500 pair of glasses and I can't see. So it was, there was little things that were adding up. And like, thank goodness I live in the modern world where there are glasses and I could see and I have access to get glasses. But they were these little annoyances were starting to add up. And then COVID hit and we had to wear masks everywhere. And for those of you who have had to wear glasses with a mask, you know where I'm going with this. You get fog in the glasses. And so it became this like the last straw for me where I was like, oh my gosh, like now I can't even see in my regular daily life. Like I'm going in and out in cold weather. My glasses are fogging up and I'm a doctor. So, you know, I wore a mask all the time in clinic. And so it was really starting to be a nuisance. So I finally said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to find out who the best doctor is this. I'm going to go see him and see what my options are because I knew with some of the issues I had with my eyes, I couldn't just get LASIK. And so the doctor evaluated me, actually gave me some new diagnoses about what was going on with my eyes that I needed to pay attention to and recommended that one of my options was that I could get basically cataract surgery where they would take the lens out of my eye and put a new lens into my eye that was my prescription or as close as they could get. They couldn't even completely correct my vision with this surgery, but would get pretty darn close. And so I underwent surgery on each of my eyes a week apart and got these new lenses in and it changed my life. Now, insurance didn't cover this because insurance doesn't cover most things with your eyes. And they were like, you know, you can just wear glasses or contacts. But I decided to invest in this surgery because I really felt like it, it might change my life. And I, I underestimated how much it would change my life. Like, I just thought it'd be nice to not have glasses and pictures all the time. It would be nice to not have my glasses fog up. It would be nice to ski without, you know, having my eyes in significant pain the entire time. But we happened to go on a beach trip to Hawaii a couple months after this happened. And I've always like liked the beach, but from afar, like if I could sit at a nice restaurant and have a nice dinner and look at the beach while I was eating, I was happy because the beach hurt my eyes. My eyes always hurt from the contacts. And so if I got any wind in my face, any salt water, any sand, I had like, you know, significant pain that I didn't realize was not what other people were experiencing when they went to the beach. So my family and I went to the beach. We got to go to Hawaii. We took advantage of some of the healthcare discounts that were going on post-COVID. And 
we had such an amazing time. I played in the ocean. I played in the pool and I discovered I loved the beach because now I could just enjoy it. My eyes didn't hurt all the time. I wasn't in fear that all of a sudden I was going to be blinded by losing my glasses or my contacts. And I had missed out on I don't know, 25 years of enjoying playing in the water and playing in the beach because of something I didn't even realize what a disadvantage I was at. And so I had so much fun that about a year and a half later, I some of the volunteer work that I do for advocacy stuff brought me to Hawaii again. Um, I live a pretty lucky life over here and I brought my family again. And this time I did something that I never thought I'd be able to do and that's that I went surfing. And surfing would have been impossible for me before because you can't surf in glasses. Like you get knocked in the water and glass is gone, right? Contacts too. My contacts could have gotten knocked off. That definitely happens in the water. And then again, like I'm in the middle of the ocean, not a great time to be blind. So I was just thrilled to have that opportunity. And like surfing to me is like, you know, so cool, such a, a fun, cool, like sexy sport, right? Like surfing, that's cool. And so that was such a cool thing that I got to do with my family and try that I never ever would have done if I hadn't kind of taken that risk and that investment to get that surf surgery on my eyes. So if you haven't seen where I'm going with all of this, haven't tied this back to how this could work for someone who is struggling with their weight, um, maybe doesn't even know what they're missing out on. I think sometimes we do need to realize when something's affecting us and we have no idea how much changing it might open up our world and open up possibilities. And what I've seen for my patients over doing this for more than a decade is Sometimes taking that step to use a medication or to get bariatric surgery is life-changing. Think of some of the things that you or a loved one maybe can't do because of their weight. There are weight limits on all sorts of things from horseback riding to riding roller coasters that maybe you have not been able to participate in because of your weight. Maybe you can't comfortably fly on an airplane because of your weight. Maybe you can't comfortably go out to eat. Maybe it's so stressful every day because you have to micromanage everything you're eating. You're constantly hungry. You're constantly thinking about food. You're having to meal prep everything. You don't realize how much extra time your brain is spending on managing your relationship with food and your body. And when you get surgery or you take the right medication for weight, those things often just go away. You're able to finally lose weight. You're able to finally sort of effortlessly doing. And over the last two years, I've used a lot more of the highly effective injectable medications like Wagovi and Zepbound. And what we see with those medications is people can finally do what they were planning to do. So instead of planning to eat salad with chicken for lunch, but actually being really hungry and not being able to skip out on the free pizza that was brought, they're actually able to just eat their chicken salad that they brought. Maybe they do eat the pizza, but now they effortlessly eat one piece of pizza and are full and satisfied and don't even think about eating a second piece. They don't feel deprived at all. They're happy and satisfied and full from their one slice. And those are life-changing experiences for people. So sometimes we need to realize we live in the modern world. And although I could have been perfectly fine and safe and lived the rest of my life with glasses, for me investing my time, taking on some risk of getting a surgery changed my life. And I'm so grateful for the life I get to live without glasses now. And I can't even imagine how much more transformative some of my patients feel. And I'm going to share some stories of my patients um, and some of the transformations uh, here in a little bit too. Okay, but long story short, one of the trade-offs of getting that surgery was I did lose some of my close-up vision, which means I do now sometimes need to use reading glasses, which even though I spent a ton of money to get rid of glasses, I do now have to use reading glasses on rare occasions. And you know what? They're just like pool floaties, right? Sometimes I just have to use them and I'd much rather be able to swim in the ocean and occasionally need reading glasses than to have missed out on some of those wonderful times that I just couldn't do before. And, you know, I didn't realize how much pain I had in my eyes until I got this problem fixed.
All right. So let's talk about some of my patient success stories. And these are kind of composite stories. So none of these are the names of the real specific patients. And if you happen to be one of my patients and it sounds kind of like your story, just realize there's actually a lot of people that are a lot like you. And so these are just composites, but they highlight what my patient experiences are like without disclosing any personal information for anyone. So let's talk about Aaron. Aaron had lost weight several times with the keto diet and exercise, but as he got older and was getting closer to 50 and had some injuries, his weight had come back and the diet and exercise strategies that had always worked for him didn't really seem to be working anymore. His blood pressure was creeping up and he had had to start a medication for that. He was starting to have gout flares on a regular basis, and his weight was too high to go on the roller coaster when he went on a recent family vacation, which was a really big bummer to him. He tried a few different medications, which helped a tiny bit, but really didn't make a big change, and then finally tried Zetbound and lost 80 pounds over the course of a year. And he felt good enough to really start changing his exercise routine and started exercising every single day. He actually was able to stop his blood pressure medication and stop his gout medication and um, was able to maintain this weight loss with his medication and by exercising on a daily basis and felt amazing and was able to go on any of the rides and any of the restrictions he had before because he was now under 250 pounds. So like, what if he had never tried a medication? He probably would have just slowly crept up on his weight and started to add more and more medications. And that's what we see in medicine, right? When you get really metabolically disturbed and you start to have prediabetes and diabetes and high blood pressure and gout and sleep apnea, it can be really hard to unwind that with lifestyle at all. It's not impossible. We definitely see people do that. And I always encourage lifestyle um, as a first step. But if lifestyle meaning diet and exercise is not working for you, maybe it's time to, you know, think about trying a medication. All right, let's talk about Maggie. Maggie is 35 years old and like many people in her family, she has type 2 diabetes and she was worried because she'd seen how much her parents had both struggled with diabetes and she was worried about keeping up with her kids as she got older. And so she decided to get bariatric and metabolic surgery to see if that would help her lose weight and get rid of her diabetes. And sure enough, um, once she got the surgery, her diabetes completely resolved. And so she did not have those high blood sugars with her diabetes anymore. And she also lost weight, was able to stay active and keep up with her family. And she actually lost so much weight that she had a lot of extra skin around her stomach, which became a little bothersome. And so she decided to invest in getting that surgery as well. Her insurance covered most of it. She could have that extra skin removed and be more comfortable. And so at this point, she no longer has obesity. She can keep up with her kids. She can do all day at Disneyland with them. And she feels like she can keep up with the other moms at her school. And I think this story kind of just reminds me that some of this is genetic, right? Like Maggie was not that old. She actually didn't weigh all that much. She had this really strong family history of type 2 diabetes. And by getting surgery, she was able to treat her diabetes in a sort of long-term permanent way without having to take a medicine every day. And she was able to just live her life and be a regular 35-year-old, um, even though her body, you know, had kind of wanted to, to put her acting more like a 60-year-old. So it was really transformative. And now she's she just feels like everyone else her age. All right. And then Sylvia, who was about 50 years old and also had diabetes and binge eating disorder, and again, tried a few medications with some success before we started Mountjaro, which is the same as Zetbound, but for diabetes. And she had this amazing transformation in her brain where she no longer felt out of control with food. And she was able to really follow 
very specific nutrition advice without it feeling like a burden. She just did the meal plan. She ate her three meals a day. She increased protein and she started doing the recommended exercise, which was finally doable because she had lost like 60, 70 pounds. And at 50 years old, she started running and she is now running two to three miles a day every day for the first time in her life because she now can and she doesn't have diabetes on her blood work anymore and her life has been truly transformed. So I just want to encourage you that there is hope out there and if what you're doing, whether it is the current medicine you're on or the current diet you're on or the current exercise plan you're on is not working or it's not working anymore or it's not working well enough, that there is a solution out there and there are people who can help you pick the right solution. And if one thing doesn't work, if none of the medicines work and you want to get surgery or you've already had surgery, but maybe you never tried medicine, you want to add that on, that there are many modern medical solutions that can help with weight and they can transform your life. And you may not know until you try. And so I think you have to decide that you deserve this treatment and that you could see what your life is like. And some of the questions you might ask yourself if, what if sticking to a diet or portions or specific way of eating was finally possible and almost effortless? What if your energy was suddenly better? What if you could sit comfortably on an airplane? What if you could run for the first time in 10, 20, or ever in your life, right? What difference would that make for you? And if you find yourself thinking, man, some of those would be pretty amazing. Those would be pretty transformative. Then maybe it's time to speak with an obesity specialist, like someone on my team or many colleagues that I have all over the country who can help you out. So if you are in the Colorado area, then you can check out my team or Colorado Weight Care. And if you are anywhere else in the country, then I recommend checking out a physician who has passed the American Board of Obesity Medicine exam or checking out the Obesity Medicine Association members to find someone who is an expert um, and can really help guide you to the right place. And we'll make sure that those links are all in your show notes. Okay. So we talked about the mindset and like, does your body need these things? And then I think the flip side that can be challenging is that if you do not have coverage for surgery, which often has better coverage, more insurance plans cover surgery or don't have cover for medications, like the financial side, the investment. So I'm going to share another personal journey of mine that opened up my eyes a little bit um, to, you know, how we all decide to spend money. So about a year ago, two teeth, two of my big teeth in the back of my mouth on each side decided they wanted to leave my mouth and they they no longer wanted to hang out there. And so they had to come out. That wasn't an option. But um, what I did next was an option, which is that I could just like not have two big teeth on each side of my mouth, which caused problems because it's really hard to chew crunchy things without those big teeth back there. I could have gotten a bridge, which was still pretty expensive uh, and involved destroying the teeth next to the missing teeth, which didn't sound very appealing and wouldn't last forever. Or I could get dental implants, which would last a lot longer, but required multiple surgeries and a lot of money. Like I'm going to probably be down $20,000 to $25,000 to take care of this dental problem. Just how I planned to spend that money. I would much rather invest it, maybe remodel part of my house, go on vacation, pay for kids' college someday. But if I did not take care of my teeth, then I may not be able to chew very well the rest of my life. My teeth might shift around in my mouth. And uh, ultimately, those were not things I wanted to do. So I've decided, you know, to invest that money in it. And so, you know, a lot of my patients are not able to get coverage for their newer obesity medications. And the price point, if you're paying cash right now, and I'm recording this in January of 2024, People can often get treatment with these medications, not the compounds, the real, you know, regulated brand name medications for about $500 a month if they do not have insurance coverage, which is a lot of money, but that's $6,000 a year, right? And so when I started thinking about that, I was like, you know, like that is a ton of money. And I never judge how anyone spends money. I never judge how much money anyone has. Like we all make our own choices. 
but I was like, well, I, you know, I spent way, way, way more than that just to have teeth this year, which was important to me. Um, but maybe for other people, like managing their weight and finally feeling in control of how they eat and finally being able to fit comfortably on an airplane and finally being able to go on the roller coaster and adding 10 or 20 years to their life, um, maybe it's worth it, right? So, you know, while I would never judge someone for not spending $500 a month because that's a lot of money, I also think some people just automatically say like, oh, that's too much. And I think you have to realize you're probably going to spend a lot less money on food um, when you're on these medications. And you may be adding a lot of quality to your life and time to your life. And at the end of the day, I often believe that the greatest wealth we have is our health, right? The greatest wealth is health. And so if that is in your budget, maybe it is worth investing in. And maybe you just have to decide that you deserve that, right? And that is a worthwhile investment for you. And again, I get that for some people, that's an astronomical amount and that's not going to work out. But for some people, it is a doable amount and it might be worth it. So that today was my little mindset shift. And again, if you are thinking about medication or surgery, please see an expert. Please use FDA regulated treatments. Use safe things. But if you need a pair of floaties to be successful, like use the floaties. If you need reading glasses, use reading glasses. If you need a surgery, get a surgery. And if you have to invest some time or money in taking care of yourself, maybe you need to recognize that you deserve that and you deserve that treatment. And life may look very different if you do get treatment and it might just be worth it. All right. Well, thanks for joining me today. And until next week, take care. Thank you for listening to the Dr. Frank Avila Show, where we learn about all things related to weight and health. If you love this podcast, make sure to leave those five-star reviews and share this podcast with a friend or loved one. If you have a topic about weight and health you want me to tackle, head over to the website, thedrfrankavillashow.com to submit your question. And make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss next week's episode. Take care.